So the video last week on journals was pretty well received. It seems like a lot of you liked that and it was pretty timely for some of you. So this week we're going to talk about chart of accounts, when you should create one and when you should avoid creating one. So the goal here is to keep our chart of accounts small. Less is definitely more here, and I'm gonna show you why. In any accounting system, including Odoo, we have a couple financial reports, and these allow us to see very quickly what's important to us. This process of looking at our accounting information to try and find business insights, places where we can increase revenue or decrease costs, is referred to as managerial accounting. And whether anybody's told you this before or not, but your prowess in managerial accounting is generally the difference between whether your business grows or fails. So keeping that in mind, we want to make it easy in accounting for us to highlight potential problems and highlight strengths in our company. And we do that by keeping our top layer, our financial reports, the P&L, and the balance sheet very simple. And we do that by keeping our list of accounts, our chart of accounts, about as short as possible. So let's go ahead and dive into this and I'll give you some principles to live by. But real quick, a caveat. This is managerial accounting. It's not related to how you do your taxes or anything else. You're going to want to listen to your tax accountant when it comes to tax planning or anything else like that as far as how you track information there. But for the most part, that advice should be fairly limited. And it leaves us a lot of leeway, especially when it comes to our P&L as far as how we design it and set it up to where it gives us a nice, effective managerial accounting tool. So let's go into configuration, chart of accounts and we're going to group by account type here. So the biggest areas where I find people get lost are in our income accounts, our cost of revenue accounts, and our expense accounts. This is where we see a lot of drift. The important thing to remember, especially when it comes to Odoo, is that this is meant to be our top level view. We can always drill down to get more information, but we want things to be highlighted very readily for us. So first, when it comes to income or cost of revenue, this is very product driven. In fact, these should, in most situations, be a direct correlation to our product categories. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, when it comes to managerial accounting, we want to have groups so that we can very easily see how profitable that group is. These could be referred to as profit centers or cost centers. So I want to be able to see very quickly on my P&L how much money I'm making from a specific product category. Now, again, this needs to be subject to what is important to you and your company. If you're looking at different product lines and trying to see, okay, should we try and sell more of this or push more money towards this? We want to very easily capture all of the revenue and all of the direct costs that are tied to that category. Let's go ahead and illustrate this with a fairly straightforward example. So say we're a company that sells and also installs air conditioning and heating equipment. So HVAC, as we term it here in the States. I would likely, as a bare minimum, have the services or the install services that I provide separated out from the products that I sell. So I can look at that as a company and say, you know, we don't make a ton of money on selling the product, but heck, we do really well when it comes to the services, so maybe we should focus more that way. So to bring this full circle, what I would say is this is going to be my HVAC equipment sales, okay? And this is going to be my HVAC equipment cost of goods sold, or I'm just gonna say COGS here. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate this guy. And this is going to be um, direct labor or installs. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this guy. And say installs and service. And it may even come to it that we want to break this out and say, okay, I want direct labor for installs and direct labor for service, because maybe there's a niche in our market for just providing service and we should fill that niche. 
So anyway, this relates directly to our product categories. So we're going to go into sales and we're going to go to configuration and go to categories here. Now, if I click into any of these, and obviously this isn't set up as an HVAC company, it's an Odoo demo, so it's a furniture company. But in this situation, I would create a new category, and this would be HVAC equipment. And I would set up my income account to be HVAC equipment sales, and my expense account to be HVAC equipment cogs. Okay, This is going to make it so that my billing drives directly to the equipment cogs and my revenue drives directly to equipment sales for the products that are underneath this category. Now, the argument could be made that all of this data is already inside of Odoo. I'm already grouping by product category. I'm even getting my revenue by product. But we are looking at this and saying, I want to have a good summary that allows management to make good decisions quickly and to drill down on information quickly. And the way that I do that is setting up my chart of accounts so it directs their attention in that way. So whether we have this information to drill down elsewhere, we want to make sure that we're summarizing what we want to summarize. So in summary, when it comes to income and cost of goods sold accounts, we want to create income accounts and cost of goods sold accounts in pairs. Okay, and we want to create those pairs based on the different areas of our business that we want to have show up very readily as profit centers or cost centers. So if we're looking at different business areas and want to see how well they're doing, those would each need to be represented by a pair of sales or income accounts and a cost of goods sold account as well. And to keep this meaningful, try and keep each of these groups under 10 accounts. If it goes beyond that, you're probably missing something there and you're focusing on too many things at once. You want to keep these groups reasonable so that it's easy for it to catch our eye and allow us to dig down deeper. Just wanted to clarify one point here. I did say pairs, which indicates that you'd have one-to-one -one relationship where you have one sales account and one cost of goods sold account, but you may have a situation where you have one revenue account that has multiple cost of goods sold accounts. Case in point, we may have HVAC installs where we say that's our revenue account, and then we could have HVAC installs direct labor and HVAC installs parts. So it doesn't necessarily need to just be two accounts connected. It could be one revenue account to multiple cost of goods sold. Just want to clarify that. All right. So that's everything as it relates to our little cost and profit centers. Now let's talk about expenses or general expenses that apply to the rest of the company. Now, without getting too long winded about this, these expense accounts are different than cost of goods sold accounts only because they're not directly attributable to any revenue source. That's generally what these should be. If we have an expense account that could be directly tied to a revenue source, it should be up in cost of goods sold. That being said, how do we decide if we need an expense account or not? If your tax accountant doesn't tell you that you need a separate category, you don't necessarily need one. But we also want to kind of logically group these things again. So that it's easy for us to look at this and say, oh, there's all my expenses that are related to utilities. There's all my expenses related to consulting. Here's all my expenses related to salary and wages. We want to keep these separated out so it's easy for us to look at it and say, oh, that's where all my money's going. So the general rule of thumb with expenses is a little bit more loosey-goosey. It's more about how much money are we spending in each of these expense accounts month over month. Beyond that, though, how much do we care about how much money we're spending in each of these categories? This is where things can get a bit interesting. So say month over month, we spend about 100,000 on salary and wages, okay? Not necessarily insignificant depending upon the size of our company. So maybe we wanna break salary and wages down into two or three smaller groups so that we can kind of see, okay, what's our main driver here month over month? The same thing could be true when it comes to sales expenses. So say we have a team of salespeople and they are running around uh, getting us more clients, 
you know, all that different stuff. But we want to see, okay, how much are they spending on gas or how much are they spending on whining and dining our clients? Those sorts of things. So we go ahead and split those out too. So really this comes down to, again, our feel for our company and the things that we want to very easily see what's going on with those. So generally speaking, what I'll do with clients is I'll sit down and look at their P&L and we'll start looking through the expenses. And if something's under a couple hundred bucks and it has its own account, I'll look pretty closely at that and say, well, maybe that could be folded up into this. Or do we even really care about this piece, right? Because we can still get that information by digging a bit deeper. It doesn't need to be on the summary level. So again, we're trying to keep this fairly small. We're trying to make sure that we're focusing on things that are important to us rather just than just having a long list of accounts. So my general rule of thumb here is that I try and keep the list of expenses under 30 if we can. I mean, if you start to reach 50, you're starting to get less and less helpful summary data. Okay. The important thing to remember with this is again, we're trying to make it so that it's easy to zoom in on things that we need to address. And then we can dig deeper by looking at, okay, well, what's the product on the bill line? And we can group on that and say, oh, we're just spending a ton on internet right now. Or, hey, we're doing too much consulting with Andrew. Maybe we need to, you know, pull back on that, which, you know, we can talk about that later. But essentially, we want to keep this list as short as we can again. And then remember that we have other information inside of Odoo that we can draw on if we need to drill into one of these numbers. That information being product or product category. Um, we can even go into it and look at who the salesperson is that's tied to these things if we need to. But we want to keep our summary level nice and succinct so that it helps us highlight potential issues that we should look into. So hopefully these guidelines will help you trim up your chart of accounts and get them right. But there's something else that we should talk about because you do want to be able to get the information you need when you need it. You do want to be able to drill down to a meaningful level if there's something on the profit and loss that looks a little bit funky or that you want to get more information on. In those moments, it's very, very important for us to have designed our accounting system to be able to capture that information. So products are there. That's great. Um, customer is there or vendor, whichever one we're dealing with in that situation is there. That's great. And we can drill down on that. Salesperson is also there. That's great. And then we have a host of other information that is tied to those variables. So we can get area, depending on where our customer or vendor is from, all of that stuff. But what if we have information that isn't necessarily tracked by those other pieces that are already there inside of Odoo? This is where analytic accounting comes in. So say we have a bill that comes in and we want to split that bill up between different departments in our company. How do we do that? So what we would do is create analytic accounts for each department inside of our company. And we'd say, as soon as a bill comes in, you need to say which department this is assigned to. Now it may just be general overhead, or we could say, hey, this bill is 50% engineering, 30% HR and 20% purchasing. And that way each of those departments get burdened with that cost appropriately. Now I'm not going to spend a ton of time on analytic accounting inside of this video because there's another video that you can check out here that covers that adequately. But I wanted you to know that you still can get the detail that you need inside of Odoo, even if you're not building out a massive chart of accounts to try and account for all of that information. So this is to say, I don't necessarily need salary and wages engineering, salary and wages HR, salary and wages purchasing. I can go ahead and collapse that up and just have analytic accounts there in case I need to drill down deeper. Same thing is true up at the revenue level, cost of goods sold level. You want to make sure and use the layers that Odoo has provided you effectively and keep the top layer, which is chart of accounts, very clean. So there you go. There are some guidelines for helping you understand when you should have an account and when you shouldn't. A lot of it comes down to what's important to your company. But remember, less is more. The less we have at the top level, the easier it's going to be for us to highlight potential issues and potential strengths and zoom in on those, which is exactly what we want to do for our business.
As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below or grab some time with me on my Calendly. And if you're struggling with your day-to-day -day when it comes to Odoo, go ahead and jump into one of my courses. Those are linked below as well. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. We'll see you soon.